In this video we're going to have a quick look at some allocation problems from some past VCAR exams. So looking at this one from the 2008 exam 2, each child is to be driven by his or her parents to one of four different concerts. The following table shows the distance that each car would have to travel in kilometres to each of the four concerts. The concerts will be allocated as to minimise the total distance that must be travelled to take the children to the concerts. The Hungarian algorithm is to be used to find this minimum value. So we can see here that we have to actually use the Hungarian algorithm to be able to answer this question. So step one of the Hungarian algorithm is to subtract the minimum entry in each row from each element in the row. Complete the step for Talia by writing the missing values in the table. So if we look at Talia's row here, the smallest number in that particular row is 13. So we need to subtract 13 from each of those numbers. So down under the table under part A, we need to enter the values 2, 0, 7 and 5. Okay, so now after further steps of the Hungarian algorithm have been applied, the table is as follows. It is now possible to allocate each child to a concert. So they've completed the Hungarian algorithm here, reducing everything that's required. Part B asks us to explain why this table shows that Talia should attend concert 2. So if we look at Talia, she has three possible concerts that she could go to because she has a zero in concert 2, concert 3 and concert 4. But they want to know why she has to go to concert 2. So in order to answer that, we're looking at the column here where concert 2 is, and we can see that Talia is the only person in that, in that column with a zero, so therefore she has to go to that concert. So she has her zero there, which means she's not going to go to concert 2 or, sorry, concert 3 or to concert 4. So in order to give an answer, why does it show? Our answer there should be, that Talia is the only possible allocation to concert 2. Part C then asks us to determine, um, determine the concerts that could be attended by James, Dante and Chanel to minimise the total distance travelled and put our answers in the table below. So we already know Talia is going to concert 2 and that she no longer is the best fit for concert 3 and 4. So by working our way through the table, if Talia doesn't go to concert three, the only other possible allocation should be James. So James should go to concert three. If James is going to concert three, then he doesn't need to go to concert one, which means we have two choices here for concert one, either Dante or Chanel. And if we look across in column four, we also have two possible allocations there, Dante or Chanel. So in order to work out what is the minimum, we would need to go back to our original values and check to see which of the two combinations would give us the best values. So if we quickly have a flick back, so looking back at our original table now, we already know Talia is going to concert 2, James is going to concert 3, and so we're looking at the combination of Dante going to concert 1 with to Chanel going to concert four, that would give us a total of 25 uh, kilometers traveled. Or the other option is Chanel going to concert one, Dante going to concert four, again giving us 25. So it actually doesn't matter which way round you put that combination. If there was a difference, you would choose the smallest total that allows you to give the, uh, the combination required. So if those two together add to 25, we then have a further 31 to be added and that would give us a total of 56 kilometres needing to be travelled. So now we can go back and answer these final questions. I'm going to say Dante is going to go to concert 1 and that Chanel is going to go to concert 4. Because as we know, it doesn't matter which way around, as long as they both go to one of those two. And determine our total distance in kilometres, that would be 56 in total. So the values from the original table of the allocated distances. Look at a second question now. 
Um, this one here, you don't necessarily have to go through and work out the Hungarian algorithm to answer this question. However, I am going to go through an example of how to do it, just to make sure everyone understands the process. So here we've got four workers, Anna, Bill, Caitlin, David, and they're each assigned to a different task. The table below gives the time in minutes that each worker takes to complete each of the four tasks, and we can see our values there. Tasks are allocated as to the minimum total time taken to complete the four tasks. Therefore, the total time is, and here we need to set up our initial matrix, and then we can work our way through um, our Hungarian algorithm. Okay, so we have here the values just put into matrix form. So the first step of our Hungarian algorithm is to subtract the smallest number from each row. So in our first row, the smallest number is 5. Our second row, again, the smallest number is 5. The third row, the smallest number is 4. And the fourth row, smallest number is 7. So let's just rewrite those values here in our second matrix. So that would make our top row 2, 0, 10, and 4. The second row 3, 0, 13, and 5. Third row 0, 2, 18, and 0. Last row 0, 4, 9 and 3. At this point we just check to see do I have a 0 in every row and every column and I don't so I need to continue using my Hungarian algorithm. So the next step is to subtract the smallest number from every column. Now obviously the first and second columns have zeros so those numbers aren't going to change. The third column the smallest number there is 9 so I'm going to subtract 9 from everything there and again, the last column, the smallest number is 0, so nothing's going to change. So let's start by just writing in the ones that aren't going to change. So first column, zero, uh, sorry, 2, 3, 0, 0. Second one, 0, 0, 2, and 4. And the final column, 4, 5, 0, 3. Now, subtracting 9 from that third column, I end up with 1, 4, 9, and 0. And so my next step now is to check, because I do have a zero in each column and each row, so now I can draw my lines. Remember, we need to use the minimum number of lines possible in order to cross out the zeros. So there's obviously a number of different ways of doing it, but I'm going to go across this row, across this one, and down that column. So I've only needed to use three, uh, three lines at this stage. Now, in order to allocate four tasks, I have to use four lines to cross out the zeros. So I'm not finished yet. Now, the next step that I use in my process, slightly different to what's in the textbook, but you may have been shown this method as well. So I look at the uncovered numbers. So these ones here and these two here, and I subtract the smallest uncovered number from those uncovered numbers. So that means I'm going to subtract one from those six numbers that are exposed. Which means the first thing I can actually do is rewrite the values in the rows and columns that um, are currently covered by lines because they're not going to change. So I'll just pop those in. That's my third row there. And just the two zeros here in that second column. And now I'm going to subtract one from the rest of the values that are left. So that would leave me a one here and a two. And on this side, I end up with 0, 3, 3, and 4. And so again, I test my lines. So I need to cross out the zeros, minimum number of lines. And if we have a look this time, I could go, I could keep the same ones if I wanted, across there, um, down here. And I need a fourth line this time to get rid of all those zeros. So that means now I'm ready to allocate. So if we look at these values here, um, I'm going to work my way through, is there any particular task that can only be done by one person? And we can see here that Caitlin is the only person that could possibly do task four. So task four is taken care of, which means Caitlin doesn't need to do task one. 
That tells us that David is now the only person that can do task one. If he's doing that, he can't do task three. That then means that Anna has to be the one to do task three. She doesn't need to do task two. And last job left is Bill doing task two. So if we now go back to our original slide and we can answer the question of what is the minimum time taken. So as we said, we had Anna doing uh, task three. We had Bill doing task two. We had Dave, Caitlin doing task four and David doing task one. So when we add those values together, 15, five, four and seven, we get a total of 31. So our answer there is C, 31. So hopefully that has helped answer some of your allocation questions. Please keep practicing them and if you want to go through any other particular questions, just let us know. Thanks.